This is Mikko Maestro, and you're listening Wrestling with Entertainment. And we are wrestling with WWE Elimination Chamber 2022 review. It took, uh, it took place in uh, Jeddah, Saudi Arabia, and the attendance was 33,328. Um, so as a whole, what did you think of it, Scooter? What a waste of an elimination chamber. And, you know, we expected things to be different, and, and yet... We're sitting with our, you know, with our thumbs up our asses. Clico, is your thumb up your ass? My thumb is trying to open this wine. I don't know about in your ass, but it's, <laughs> it's, it's on this wine bottle, that's for sure. AEW in your oh, ass! ass. <laughs> oh, God. I mean... That's how I feel. That's how some of them wrestlers feel. I wonder how Sonny Kiss feels seeing all these other wrestlers pop off. And he's still chilling. I, I mean, I will say that if, you know, if you're a teenage boy and you were wondering if you had a, you know, a, a latex fetish, boy, howdy. I mean... Like, hot oh, damn, it was, you know, vinyl and rubber everywhere. And then the... Oh, oh God. And then the uh, special preview, of, or the, the paid preview came on. <laughs> oh, I'm sick. Um, Take medicine for that. Not physically. Let's uh let's get into it. Roman Reigns defeated Goldberg by technical submission in five minutes and fifty nine seconds for the Universal Championship. No surprise there, Kalika. It him beating Goldberg wasn't the problem. It was how he would do it is the is the issue, right? And that's where it, I think it comes for Roman because we all knew Roman was going to win. It was a matter of him beating that ass and looking untouchable, which yeah. I mean, Goldberg tried the hits, but he went out on his sword like a dude who tried to come out like Beowulf, pretty much. You know, new new man comes up on the top, and now it's time to do the honor, and Goldberg did the honor. Anything you want to add to that, Scooter? Uh, for those who don't know, I, I, I go to sleep very late, and I sleep very late into the day. So I set an alarm to actually wake up to t- you know, to turn on Peacock, you know, and then, and then you know, I go back to sleep for a little bit. So I'm here in you know, the Ro- you know, Roman you know, Goldberg you know, in my mind, and... Yeah, I close my eyes, and next time I open them up, you know, the the, the match is already over, so. I mean, that's a gold book match, isn't it? True. Very true. Next match, Bianca Belair defeated Alexa Bliss to drop Liv Morgan, Nikki Ass, and Rhea Ripley, and... The what? Chamber match. Oh. Nick, Nick, Nicky who? Ash. He got an enunciate chance. Get your mind out of the gutter, school. Um, she won an opportunity to uh, compete for the Raw Women's Championship at WrestleMania in 15 minutes and 41 seconds. As of now... The shortest what? elimination chamber match ever. Yeah, yeah. Wait a minute. That. How? Uh, but, uh, 
Uh-huh. It, it, it would take a, it takes a minimum of 20 minutes. By, by, by the rules of the match alone. This is correct, sir. I mean, you know, they're not, you know, Brock Lesnar. I mean, you know, unless one of them is, you know, popping HGH. But, you know... HGH wasn't there. Why? Why did... You know, why did we really not think they wouldn't give it to Bianca? I did say to Bianca. She was my first choice. I did because I didn't think that they were going to go back to the black female a la Naomi, but <laughs> look at what happened to Naomi, but I guess Bianca's a little different breed, so I'm happy that they did that, but the question is, will she win? Because now we know the story. It's going back to SummerSlam where she got wronged. Are they going to right the wrong? in spite of their most popular superstar. Well, I mean, that's kind of you know, They have to build uh, a star at some point that isn't Becky, Charlotte, B uh, Sasa, or Bailey. So yeah, it has. she kind of has to. If she doesn't get the W on Becky at Mania, then having her lose in 26 seconds at um, SummerSlam was for nothing. Me personally, I think... I would have taken... To me, Charlotte's the bar. Because Becky's the bar. Becky, Bailey, and Sasha are the cult bar. Charlotte is the bar. So... Uh, and and my problem is that more people are going to root for Becky more so than Bianca in at Mania because Becky literally is trying her best to be a heel and the crowd's like fuck you we love you. I mean, there's always going to be some people that's going to cheer for Becky, but no, 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 no. Some. you saying some. I'm saying all. So Becky would have to do something like totally off the grid that would make people hate her. And that's the problem that I have. Because everyone is... It, 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 it's not like Bailey where we like Bailey and people are buying into Bailey being a heel. Becky is that girl that we looked at in ourselves where we were looked down upon and we won't let that go. That's the problem. Basically, it, it, Becky has to come out in a clan robe uh, for you know anything to... Pretty much. She's got to go like South Tent because, I mean, Bianca went to UT, so she would have to be like on some... Some race shit. That might be interesting how they promote this going into the. Um, which is probably which is probably why they're really waiting until February is over to actually have them really cut promos on each other. Oh no! If they if they really wanted to, they would do a Black History Month because that if you're gonna upset the black people, you might as well do it at the. The, the month that matters the most. Like, shit, at this point. Like, fuck that. I mean, if you're going to get in their arse and, and call it out, you might as well do it. Because, honestly, that would get... I think that would... that It would have to be something like that. To get people to be like, buy into Bianca what, or wanting to see Becky get her ass beat. Because that's the thing you have to sell. You have to sell, why do we want Becky to lose? I agree with that. Um, somebody that we don't have to sell losing. Uh, Naomi and Ronda Rousey defeated Charlotte Flair and Sonya Deville by uh, submission. Uh, Ronda had to wrestle with one arm tied behind her back. Um, I mean, not the greatest 
technical maps in the world, but it progressed two stories quite well. I thought so, anyway. What say you, uh, Scooter? Uh, yeah, I mean, it, 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 uh, yes, Ron, I can kick your ass with one, uh, one arm, two arms, no arms. Uh, and then, yeah. What your thoughts on Ronda Rousey? Man, fuck Ronda Rousey's. What say you, Kaliko? I really thought they would have went the villain way, but this tells me Ronda ain't winning at Mania. That's what that tells me. But then again, I, I don't get why Charlotte wouldn't just get a pair of brass knuckles and pop her chin, because we all know her chin is weak as fuck. But anywho, that's neither here nor there. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Now, uh, now we got Drew McIntyre uh, versus Matt Cat Moss. Next! We are Becky Lynch defeating Lita by pinfall in 12 minutes and 14 seconds. I Better. Like, I kind of felt like this was a decent last match if Lita decides to stay away after this. Yeah, it was. I mean, the... We kind of knew Lita wasn't going to win the belt. It's it's like the Goldberg thing, right? Go out on your shield type thing. What Lita did for Becky was what Trish Stratus did for Charlotte at SummerSlam. It's just another legend under the feather, the cap. You know what I'm saying? Under the not, belt notch. What? Another dub under the belt notch, but a bigger name. So this... In retrospect, should this be Lita's last match? Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if she's at the Women's Memorial Battle Royal, but God knows. I don't know. <sighs> now we got the Usos uh, defending the Tag Team Championship, the SmackDown Ones. Uh, go see the Viking Raiders. Next! The match never got started. <laughs> Next! Well, there, there's a reason. It was cut for time. Uh, the, w, the WWE had a... Uh, they had a specific uh, two-hour and 50-minute window to do the pay-per-view... Because in Saudi Arabia, the event actually was broadcast over on free TV. Yes. Oh. And, well. And, um, oh, interesting point needs to be made here about uh, what Dave Meltzer said in regards to this being cut and the UFC comparison about, oh, UFC only cut, tries to cut down its video packages when it's you know, running long. WWE actually cuts matches. And the wrestling fan community is like, uh, Dave, there's something you know about UFC fights that we don't? <laughs> Right. But, uh, they had 10 minutes less than it usually takes them to do uh, a normal um, exclusive live event or whatever the fuck they're calling them. Uh, or even, even Raw. Uh, you're not wrong about that. Um, and we'll get into it in a moment, but I feel like they had they could have had time to do things, and they just didn't. They, they could have took away those video packages and just have 
I mean, the Undertaker promo alone could have uh, been enough to have the Usos of uh, Viking Raiders match. No? Mm. Yeah, I mean, but I could, I could see if you're gonna cut any match that that would be, you know, the first on the chopping block. Rightfully so, I suppose. And uh, that brings us to the last match. We got Brock Lesnar. Defeating Seth Rollins, uh, Austin Theory, Bobby Lashley, AJ Styles, um, in a Elimination Chamber match for the WWE Championship. The match lasted 14 minutes and 56 seconds. The fastest uh, Elimination Chamber of all time. Fastest Elimination Chamber in an hour since... The previous one. Yes. We had uh, two Elimination Chamber matches, which less than are, supposed to, they are supposed to be 20 minutes long at least, because it's supposed to be five minutes per person, go under 15 minutes. Or 20 minutes tight in time, as they used to call it. It's like having a nine-minute ladder match to open up Raw. Ah. Um, well, there may there may have been a reason why a, a legit reason why this one went short, and it's because Brock went early, and Brock didn't understand that. The lights land on the pod of who's entering the match, and he didn't realize that Lashley was was going to enter the uh, was going to be the uh, technically the third entrant. Technically, yes. Um, but. Everything that happened with Lashley and everything after that was supposed to happen. Brock just sped it up. And he went through every motherfucker in that match, didn't he? I mean, he doesn't get paid by the hour. But my biggest concern with Brock winning this match... Is why the fuck did he win the Royal Rumble then? <laughs> like what? What the fuck? Like that basically like what? What's the fucking point? Because if you were gonna do that, you could have just had Brock fight Lashley in win and fucking didn't even need the elimination chamber and fucking have Brock do it that way and use the he could have been like yo I know I want Roman at Wrestlemania but I want to combine the belts which I told your ass what they were going to do James and he could have just said I'm invoking my Royal Rumble match early and I want it in Saudi Arabia against Lashley beat the shit out of Lashley hell Lashley's injured we knew that was going to be a quick match Win the match, so that way at least the Royal Rumble winner got something out of it. At this point, the Royal Rumble winner should have just been vacant. Shit. It's convoluted at this point, no? It's complicated, that's what it is. I mean, it, 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 it's more convoluted than it was last year. With, with you know... And, and it's a shame, because Lashley always seems... On the losing end of it, I mean, he gets last year. He gets hot shot at the title before Mania, goes into you know Mania defending, has a lackluster match with McIntyre, and and it, you know becomes one of the few heels in 
you know, in WrestleMania history to retain the title at Mania. And now, you know, this time around, you know, he's, he's got the title back. It ends up again and, and, and loses it, goes through all this crap. I mean, Lashley... Lashley needs a proper, a, re, a really a proper title win. The, I'll put it this way. The only reason I don't see that WrestleMania win against Drew, I, I see what you're saying as the match being not the greatest, but... The match was so important in the context that me, a lot of us black people were thinking he was going to lose going into the bitch. Mm. So the fact that he even won the motherfucker was fucking jovial, was happy for us because we were like, we were going in thinking, oh shit, Drew's the man, Drew's going to get it. And well, when that didn't happen, I think every black person I saw was like, yeah! And I think I was like that, too. I think I still got my video. I will tweet the video that I took when Lashley won. I was fucking lit. Because I was uh, like, yeah. why he won? I, I was, I, and hence why I didn't bring up the, you know, the circumstances of the match and, and the, you know, the... The the aura surrounding it. I I was literally talking about the l- legit actual action from bell to bell. Oh yeah, I I get I I got your point. I was just filling in the blanks for you, my man. Well, once again, we got Brock Lesnar as WWE champion. You know, it's and from a standpoint of you know. Um, you know, we're going to see Roman and Brock for the dark time. It's kind of, uh, but also, the... Fifth and a half time, by the way. I can understand it as well, because they're trying to tell that story in a different voice, and that wasn't the last two times they wrestled, and try and make it kind of more unique to this WrestleMania as well. They they wanted to be in the same vein as Rock Austin and Taker and Triple H. I was going to say Warrior and Hogan. No, no, they and if you pay attention to SmackDown, uh, Heyman cuts a promo on you know, this match being bigger than Rock Austin, bigger than you know Undertaker Triple H, bigger than Brock conquering the streak, and. You know, it, it's the 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 match in and of itself is historical for repetitious reasons, uh, being the third repeat main event at three different Wrestle Manias. All for the championship. And yeah, also yeah, this also makes it yeah. The only championship main event uh, to happen on three separate occasions within the same decade. Um, you know, Brock and Austin was in the same decade, I believe. I said championship match and main event. Rock Austin in nineteen was not the main event. No, it wasn't. What's you know, I, 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 I still, I stand by that this should be, this should be, this should be an I quit match. Do you honestly believe that Brock Lesnar would say the words I quit to put Roman over? Well, lucky he, he lays down for three seconds. Oh, no, I mean, don't worry, Brock just needs to take a shot to the balls. Um, 
Austin work for Austin? Well, Austin Theory doesn't count. But he did it. He I wonder if he... Count. But I think if he chokes him out, that might be a move. I mean, it was... Eh, honestly, I feel like it's a little cheap. I wanna it's see... cheap. Was it cheap when Jay Taker did it? When who? Taker did it. When did... Who did Undertaker choke out? Lesnar? Lesnar? Yeah. Um, that, that, was, was, that, that was summer for him. That was, yeah. that was controversy to that. So... That's why it would be better if he did it legit. I mean, there's lots to negotiate when it comes to this, but, um... But I think maybe we could save that for another time. Uh, Scooter, what are your thoughts on this paid preview? Thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs in the middle. Thumbs just grazing the sphincter on the verge of penetration with said asshole. All right. Uh, Calico. Thumbs in the middle. I, I can't get over the fact that Brock won, which negated the Royal Rumble. I mean, I get what they were trying to do, but that just like, ugh, it wasted the Royal Rumble. And Bianca was a surprise, and everything else followed the script. I agree, and I am thumbs in the middle as well. You know, from just a pure, you know, entertainment standpoint, I didn't, I wasn't dreading watching the matches. Nothing was, like, super boring. I mean, the, the, the longest match was 15 minutes, and that was the women's elimination chamber. So, they kept me invested and in my attention on what was in front of me. So, again, it wasn't the greatest uh, pay preview ever, all, but it definitely held my attention. So for that, thumbs in the middle. So you're saying you didn't have any sort of attention deficit during this event, James? Uh, and sometimes for these WWE ones, yeah. Majorly. It means... Especially since, you know, you were sleeping. No. <laughs> oh, no, I watched this like two days later on at a decent hour. Smart man. I was, like I've been saying, I've been, I have to watch the Olympics on Saturday. <laughs> nothing, nothing will beat the time I got up at 5 a.m. to call that first Australian pay per view. <laughs> I mean, that doesn't sound too. Too much of a bad time. I mean, uh, I, I'd rather I, stay I, up till five than get up at what nine. Yeah, the the remix pajama party. I called it. <laughs> the surprise uh, is more new. I'm new now. Uh, two more quick pieces of news. One, uh. Just have to mention this, that uh, on Fox, there's a new version of You Bet Your Life, hosted by Jay Leno, uh, and uh, last night's episode that was on before SmackDown featured a man named Joe Fanene. If that name isn't familiar to you, that's the father of... Nia Jax. Hmm. So, you know... He was a football player, right? N no, he was one of the few in the Samoa Dynasty that didn't go into athletics. That's pretty well. Um, and I, I don't know if, you know, her father needs, you know, <laughs> needed the money. Um, I hope not. Um, also... Tony Khan's announcement. 
two front runners. And these will most likely not be it. But the first is an AEW streaming service. Two. Here comes the money. Oh, God, no. Really? Most likely not, but... I, I've heard a rumor that... At least one phone call has taken place. I feel like Paul Levesque is more likely to be AEW than... That is the other thing I heard, but I wasn't really giving that any credence. I mean, he's not a McMahon. He's only married to McMahon, so... I mean, Vince would cut him out of the friggin', you know, cut the cut his grandkids out of the will if, if Trip showed up on that. Doesn't Probably seem like he's doing that well. But either way, either way, I just had to yeah. get that on the record before, you know, we go off the air. That'll conclude all coverage of the Elimination Chamber. Um, if you like what we're doing, please like, subscribe, comment, vote on YouTube and CastBox. Of course, this was sponsored by Rogue Energy and Player One Coffee. Uh, if you... Uh, join us this Wednesday as we interview Shannon Lavanzi. You don't, uh, you definitely don't want to miss that one. And follow the show on Twitter and Instagram at Wrestling with E for all your wrestling with entertainment needs. Um, you can follow us individually as well. I am at James J nine nine three. Where can they find Kalika? You can find me celebrating my birthday on February 29th at I Am Kaliko. Evidently, there is no 29th this month. Why do you gotta kill the kayfabe, sir? <laughs> I mean, all you have to do is look at a calendar. And the, the kayfabe's done. Son of a biscuit, I'm just gonna come out to you. <laughs> hey, I guess his birthday is a kayfable. Well, bear, when you come bear. after me, no, bear. Fucking drink, God damn it. Well, damn, I'm going to have to because there's no February 29th and Facebook is going to lie to y'all and say it's February 28th when my birth certificate says otherwise. So that's propaganda, sir. Don't worry, your birthday's been moved to June 31st. I Actually, I picked like the seventh day of Kwanzaa to try to keep the faith, but you know, that it'll actually be actually put in permanently. Oh. <laughs> and we'll see other ways. Scooter, where can we find you? Uh, they can find me up there, ass two doors to the left, ass for Bill. And they can find me on Twitter at Scooter Dust, as always. And the new and slightly improved remix on YouTube with WrestleMania. Yes, it's a sidecast now. We are that side piece podcast that you're afraid to tell your wife about. And of course, find me in all my Twitch exploits on so many fucking channels now, I can't even fucking keep track. Medusa, Johnny Gargano, uh, Colt Cabana, and, 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 and so many others. Uh, but the main one, of course, me and Regal Casadillo Jr., along with the rest of the Smoking Dragons clan, Twitch.tv, <gasps> backslash Smoking Dragons. Well, Coleco Yachts and Scooter Dust, I'm James J, and this has been Wrestling with Entertainment. Hey, where are the white women at? Hey, guys, this is Brutal Bob Evans from Hangs with Bob Seminars and TheWrestleLife.com. And you are listening to Wrestling With Entertainment, one of my favorite podcasts in the whole wide world. Hey, folks, this is the Colossal Mike Law, and you are listening to Wrestling With Entertainment. Enjoy the show. Support these guys. We appreciate it very much. We'll see you at ringside.